This excerpt was taken from a full and bloom interview with guitarist Mick Sueda. To listen to the entire interview, click the link in the description. That's like the tale in Mark Free's Gone and Mark Torin. Is it Torin? Is that how you say his last name? Uh, I think he says Tori. Tor- Torin. So Mark Torin yeah. is uh, the vocalist by then? Yeah. He's a singer, and Lonnie is playing bass at that point. Oh, wow. Okay. So then that transitions into, and I know when I, that was another thing when I interviewed David, he had said that he was actually in the band or or in that early version of Bullet Boys, but he didn't get along with Mark. Yeah, that's a common theme. Um, I could see that, uh, see where the path was leading. And I said, look, I'm, I'm going to take off. And I said to Mark and Lonnie, I, I want to start a new band. I want to, all we need really is a drummer. Why don't you guys come with me? And they were both to a man, uh, responded with, well, this is our big band. You know, we just got in this band and we want to see it through and, and this could be huge and we want to keep going. This is, this is like our dream, right? As opposed to just going back into the streets of Hollywood and trying to start over. So I said, okay, well, I totally get it. That's cool. I'm going to go and, uh, I'll audition guys, you know? So I got in my little apartment and started auditioning players and writing songs. And uh, shortly after that, they came around and and, uh, realized that that wasn't going anywhere. And uh, that's when we got started with uh, Bullet Boys. And yeah, the first couple of rehearsals, I remember uh, Dave came down, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's probably correct when he says he had a hard time getting along with Mark. That's that's a very familiar story. I'm assuming he would have already known that with working with him in King Cobra, right? Oh, yeah. Mark, definitely, uh, his character came through uh, almost immediately upon joining that band. It was very obvious that he uh, he was a troubled cat. So, uh, but, I mean, Dave uh, was willing to give it a try. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes that's the only way a band will stay together. And I can speak from personal experience. You know, you have to overlook things you have to come to grips with certain elements of personalities and uh that's the difference between the one percent of bands that succeed and the 99 percent that don't something uh bothers you or something gets under your skin it's way easier to just quit and walk off and never make it happen but you have to make the determination is this thing that i'm a part of worth holding together even if i have to sacrifice what i believe to be my principles. And that's the decision I made. Dave didn't uh, want to deal with that. He ended up going in a very different direction. The stuff you're able to overlook was just based on because you believed in his voice, right? Yeah. And that's a good way to look at it. His voice was stronger than the weakness of his character. And so when you say that he's troubled, what was he like to work with? Well, you know, I'm not going to bag on the guy. Um, He... Uh, has um, you know as someone to work with certainly he at that point had a great voice and he could sing virtually anything but stylistically we were very different I have uh, a different approach to lyrical content and, and I have a, a work ethic that is is very different from a lot of people I'm willing to put in the, the hours and do the work that's necessary and uh that was critical to this band getting where it got because uh, not everybody has that kind of desire to put in the time and effort. So, uh, yeah, without going into too much detail, um, yeah, we were just very different people and that we got as far as we did, I like to think is uh, in spite of him. (laughs) Did he write all the lyrics? Uh, No, he actually wrote very few lyrics most of his ideas had to be finished to a large degree by myself so then when you say lyrics then what was the i thought you said uh, something about him um writing lyrics that you didn't like or whatever it was just the fact that uh i mean you guys wrote stuff like smooth up in you and hard as a rock what, what were you guys trying to say well yeah don't misunderstand i mean the idea of that kind of song we certainly were um on the same page. We were just a raucous rock and roll band and made no bones about writing those kinds of songs, although people like to think that that's all we ever did. I think if you look deeper into our lyrics, you'll realize that's a fallacy. But I'm just I'm just saying from the point of view of a 
a particular line or staying with a train of thought. Um, we were very different in, in that regard. And in terms of uh, the actual lyric writing, most of that was, uh, well, let me just say that he had some ideas and sometimes those ideas had to be finished or amended. How did Mark retain ownership of the Bullet Boy's name? Well, uh, by the time 1993 came around and uh, our third record was out and we were promoting it and trying to get some legs under it, um, we did a show at the Palace and we were sound checking. And uh, I remember that he was late, obviously, and, as usual, and we're standing around. And when he finally gets there, he starts going off and, and berating like all, all the other successful bands like Warren, Skid Row. And, and I'm looking out and I'm seeing bands in the audience that are just waiting for the sound check. And meanwhile, this guy's, he's like proselytizing and, and going off on... Into the mic? You know, it was, it was, it, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was his sound check, right? Just going off on all these other bands and just bitching, basically. And uh, I remember thinking, okay, that's it. That's it for me. I gathered everybody upstairs. I said, this is it. I'm done. Um, I'll see this record through. I'll promote it but I'm not making any more records with this guy. That was the straw that broke this camel's back. And uh, so we went out and did dates, and he ended up making a call to Warner Brothers and, and got the red button pushed on our record. And so it was over in a heartbeat. Everything just sort of fell apart. And uh, What do you mean? You know, he calls Warner and Brothers and gets them to kill the record? Yeah. Yeah, he made a call, uh, and t he thought he had a friend there, and obviously the friend's going to do its best for the record company. Um, so the single got killed. But what good right, is that? Uh, what good is that? What's the? I don't even understand the thinking. What good is that going to do? He just wanted to get everybody well, out of the band, or what? Welcome to my world, brother. Welcome to basically from day one of that band, till that day, that stuff went on almost endlessly. It was, and then... And, and, the way I say it is like it was just basically damage control from day one for everybody. Something was always going on that we had to try to fix or mend fences or, I mean, and that that was just like normal. But try to explain it. No, you won't even begin. But anyway, that was that was it. And so basically, I just wanted to distance myself as much as I could. And we sat down in a meeting. I said, look, I just want my gear. Just want my amps and guitars. You take the name, just continue on however you want to do it. I just want to get away. And uh, Jimmy pretty much joined me in that. I remember one night we were in, uh, I think we were playing with Great White or something. This is on our, maybe our second record. And uh, Rick Nielsen from Sea Trick was there again one of my heroes, you know? And uh, so we all got together and we thought we'd do this cool thing, man. Let's just, let's open with Hello There, a cool cheap trick song right at the beginning. We'll just hit them and it'll be great. Everyone will love it. So we go out there and we play the song and uh, we all come off stage and sure enough, Rick comes into the dressing room and we're all high five and like, oh my God, love you, Rick. You're the best. And uh, Tareen, I can just see him doing it now. He like flicks back his hair, gets up in Rick's face and he's all serious, right? Like, so Rick, what you think, we man? We played your song. What you think, Rick? Just deadpan as ever. He goes, "Yeah, I always knew that song sucked, and you guys proved it." And Tareen just, of course, he's, his face just glosses over, and he doesn't know how to respond. And I'm just laughing hysterically. It was great. 